The ruling of Progressive Congress APC has not seen as much pressure, perhaps, as it's experiencing at the moment. A party uh, now uh, that is working on a tight rope of getting its leadership structure together and the dilemma of the side that will become the flag bearer ahead of 2023. The governor of Kogi State and one of the presidential hopefuls in the 2023 race has sounded a note of warning to the party on the state of affairs of things and is wanting everyone to come together. Let me allow you to take a listen to the governor of Kogi State. APC is a party of various tendencies. Various political parties came together to form the All Progressives Congress. Out of all of it, I belong to none of them. So my first political party is All Progressives Congress. All Progressives Congress is the only political party I know. And that is the platform that gave me the opportunity to be a governor today. It has been built up to the level we are today. And remaining only one more lap to go. And that lab is the National Convention. It is the most important of it all. If we get it right, then we'll have a solid party. If it is mismanaged and we did not see the booby traps ahead of us, God forbid, may he not spare the doom for us. First important task, I want each and every one of us to pray, and pray very hard, sincerely, that the party remains solidly together. The governor of um, Kogi State, Yaya Belo, sounding a note of warning to the party. Let's get some perspectives to this matter. I'm being joined by a lawyer and a member of the Lincolns in London who is currently serving as a special advisor to the Deputy Senate President. Mr. Daniel Boala is a vocal member of the APC who has voiced his opinions on issues of the law, public policy, and advocacy. He joins us right here in Abuja City. Thank you so much, Mr. Boala, for joining us tonight Thank on the you. program. Thank you for First having me. First and foremost, before yeah. I allow you to respond to what Professor Pato told me, said, right. because I gave the opportunity to Mr. Oche, also to Chidoka, to respond to same, right. and also respond to what Mr. Chidoka said, mm -hmm. as I mean, relating to your party's chances in 2023. First and foremost, is what the governor of Kogi State said about his fears and the warning that he's given that if your party is not careful, the worst might happen. Yeah, um, I think his, his warning is apt. And I, if you remember, even the president at what time uh, sounded the same warning to the party to be united. And usually when a party is uh, completing the cycle of one president and leading, going to a transition, usually there will be one or two tendencies. So it is natural to exercise that caution going forward, look at those things that divide us and try to minimize them and emphasize on those things that unite us so that we can come together as a common front to uh, go to the next chapter of the party. Uh, if you want me to respond to Professor pa uh, Ichidoka... Just before we right, go there, right. is whether or not your party is in good stead right now. I what? heard it's just about two weeks before your convention. Right. A lot of divisions and people are angry. Uh, good to hear and see that some youth who went to court are willing to withdraw the case in court. But yeah. there are several states that are still not happy with the division that they're having and the leadership of, those, of the party in the states. Yeah, it's natural. And I, th I think I recall there was a time you asked me the same question when I was here. And uh, my response was that uh, there is always a battle between an incumbent and his predecessor. Because the predecessor would have left a structure, the incumbent will inherit the structure. And any time you have a Congress coming, there will be a tussle and a fight over who controls the structure in the state. It is not magical. If you go to PDP, it's the same. It is how you manage it. And if you ask for my opinion regarding the management of the crisis, I would say so far the Reconciliation Committee are doing their best. The question is, are we likely to go into the conf uh, con uh, convention with the problem? The answer will be if we take care and we do what we are supposed to do, we are likely to find a consensus. What it takes for a man to make up his mind or to change his mind from a position he's holding 
One is if you apply, if you appeal to his senses. Two, if you reason with his basis for crying. And three, if you find a common ground to walk. This thing can happen in two hours. It can happen in one day. It may even last forever so, if it is not properly handled. So the question is that with your experience in politics and right. what you've seen on the ground uh, generally in your party, mm -hmm. two weeks before the convention, mm -hmm. your party is not looking at sitting people down because there's different... In fact, the national chairmanship seat of the party, you've not decided whether it's not east or not central, that it will be zoned up until now. Uh, if you so, recall, I mean, for those who say your party is disorganized or doesn't even know the way to go, are they right in some sense? And they are not right. Why? Because in politics, 24 hours is like three years. In fact, 24 hours is like 10 years. A decision can change. You and I are talking today. In politics, we can reach a conclusion today by tomorrow morning it has changed. So if a situation looks bad today in politics, by the next morning, it can change. Talking about two weeks to convention, crisis here and there, national chairmanship problem. It is not a big deal. It is finding consensus. If you remember, even PDP, they have had a series of meetings in which they agreed on some specific post to reach a consensus, and then the remaining posts will be thrown out for contest. Now, the national body of the party and the stakeholders of the party are having a conversation. The good thing is, all of the individuals who are putting themselves forth for the position of national chairmanship appear to have the characteristic and the qualities of the party. Now, the stakeholders and leaders of the party will make a good sense of judgment in their conversation for a consensus. And so I believe, and I'm optimistic, that the convention is going to be smooth, the convention is going to be successful. If you have a contest, if, if you are, will it, if you have a contest, if there is a contest, the present division, because the question will be, mm -hmm. one single person that could make a consensus idea work in the APs that could bring people together and that could easily be listened to he said, President Muhammad Abouai, and you think the he's political dead? leader of your party. And you think but with he's his dead? style <laughs> in the past, do you think that President Buhari will intervene in the scheme of things as, re as relating to whether or not people should have a consensus before, to, uh, before the convention? I think it is, even, it is even the intervention of the president that advised that it is better for the party to have a consensus going forward. He's already intervening. Otherwise, he would have just sat back. Yes, I can't he has. remember that. And he doesn't have to call you Shehuna. I say Shehuna, I've, no, I've no, just told it's him. not made public. I mean, no, it has I, been. I've, I've seen it. events across all political parties. I have but read. I can't remember. I have read. Then. I can send you the link where it was reported that the president's preference is that a consensus be reached heading to the convention. As a matter of body language of those who are around him. No, it was reported. <laughs> I mean, it was So now I'm saying because his style has not been right. the one to intervene, to get into the arena in your party affairs. I agree with you, but I will cast your mind back to your own interview with the president in the villa. When you raised issue of the 2023 and all that, you even wanted to put, a, put answers to him when you asked if he has a preferential candidate. And he told you he has someone dear to his side, but he will not say because the person might be eliminated. That means he's one, interested about the well-being of the party, Two, he's thinking about the well-being of the party. And three, it might even be strategic that he's quiet now until the 11th hour. Because in politics, if you let out your cat too early, you're likely to lose that. Remember, he's a retired military general too. The element of surprise in their modus operandi is their strongest strength. Let me allow you to listen quickly to right. Professor Pato Tommy. Professor Pato Tommy, I allow you to listen to sound by part of what he said here on this program on Sunday. What is happening here? is an amalgamation of the willing and the dispossessed. I call them the willing and dispossessed. Nigerians who are passionate to rebuild Nigeria because they know what it should be. And Nigerians who have been skimmed out by the political class of now. These are youth who have been called this. These are women who have been so ignored that we are an embarrassment compared to Rwanda and small African countries in terms of participation of women in politics. You know, Professor Party told me there, right. uh, he did say on this program that your party and the PDP are no options for Nigerians Intriguing. in 2023. Intriguing enough, or the greatest respect to Professor Party told me, whom I consider like a senior brother and we're always in touch. He was a member of APC. Or he is a member of the APC. Oh, he is I'm still... not sure he has left the APC. And I, no, I think I have listened to one interview in which he was asked 
if he's a member of APC, in which I think he denied. But there is no thought force anywhere. Every man's ignorance is his thought force. I will give you a graphic example. If you look at 60 to 70% of the people who are pushing for the third force, they are members of either of these two major political parties who tried to push and felt disenfranchised. Such personalities don't build a third force. If there is any third force, as it were, it should be young progressive party. But even the young progressive party, remember in the 2019 election, they gave their platform to one of the proponents of a third force. What did he do? After he ran and lost the election, rather than staying patiently to build that political party, he dissed them and said he has left politics, he's focusing on governance, and a year and a half later, he came back again. He said he's joining other political parties to run. So some of these people who talk about thought force, they don't have the patience to stay and build a political party. Where you shoot, you lose, you come and shoot again. And I don't think the future of Nigeria is going to be around these personalities. If you want to really, really build a thought force, you look at the young progressive party that has shown consistency in the way they operate. But because of structure and the dynamics of politics, it is impracticable for a thought force to rise now and defeat either of these two political parties in the 2023 election. All right. Let me take you, because a similar question that I asked um, Mr. Uh, Chidoka is the kind of people mm -hmm. that, that, that are being, that, whose names have been thrown up mm -hmm. in the in the last few weeks. Right. For example, in your political party, mm -hmm. Yaya Adelo, Rotimi Amechi, Rochas Okorocha, Yemi Oshibanje, the vice president, Molati Nobu. No, Yemi Oshibanje is not running. Uh, what do you mean? Um, he's not running because... He's not uh, running for president. He's not running. He's not interested. Why? Are you if, saying that authoritatively? Because I follow news and event, and in all of the occasion in which he's called out, I said, man, then let's not even go far. Yesterday or so, I think it was reported in a newspaper two days ago that he said he was going to announce his presidency after convention. What happened? Laole Akande, his essay, issued a very strongly worded uh, statement that he is not talking about presidency. And anybody who is reading in any other media should discard it. If you want information, it must emanate from them. But I think I know the wisdom why President, um, uh, Vice VP President, Shibanjo. VP Osibanjo is not running and he is shooting down every attempt to point towards that. I think I, it's because of three elements. Number one, he may have understood that the principle, general principle of equity and governance is that one good turns deserve another. He had a principal that supported him for eight years. I mean, the principal could have changed him in 2019. He supported him all three. And because Asiwaju had indicated interest, morally, not legally, it will be injurious for the vice president to express interest. That is why he is not. Secondly, the part of the country where he comes from, these are cultural issues. They are deeply rooted in the way they operate. That if somebody has helped you and now has indicated interest, your best bet is to even go about supporting him in the hope that if he doesn't get it, he will now throw his weight behind you. But you will not challenge him. And I think that since the vice president is not interested, it is important that he comes out and downplay his supporters and support uh, Asiwaju. Why? Because if you continue to leave people in limbo, there is going to be a crisis between your supporters and his supporters. So much so that if tomorrow he, the chances are not clear for him, he will not be in a position he will push for. So, forward. I mean, some of the names have been put on the screen right there. Uh, mm -hmm. Governor Dave Umayi, in fact, the governor of Kwasi uh, State, also his name has been thrown. And some of these, and I asked uh, Mr. Oshitsu Chide, okay, whether or not, his party and the kind of names that we have seen are a match for your party. The question now is, are these names and these uh, personalities, are, are, are they a match for the PDP and the kind of people that we've, we've seen the name from? Well, the, the biggest magic that PDP can spring and give APC a run for the money if you, is if you pair Atiku and Governor Wiki. Then you are now going to engage in a really basketball finals. But any team other than these two, I mean, they, they can't go anywhere. They will probably be struggling alongside why Young Progressive Party and Abga. But in terms of the personalities in APC, and now all of them have a right to run. Constitutionally, they are, they are, they are empowered. Everybody is qualified. But we have now gone beyond just 
constitutional qualification to look at certain qualifications that are within the prism of politics. Number one, your capacity and your reach. Number two, your political structure. Number three, your capacity to galvanize the people. Number four, whether your voice is being heard. Now, I look at every geopolitical zone, when I look at it from my own point of view, I look at one individual. So, for example, if you look at the Southeast, the person you can look at, if you ask me, is Dr. Chris Ngige. It's not even some of these individuals you're mentioning. For example, Dave Mumai just came in yesterday. It will be difficult for him to command the, this patronage of others. As of course, Chris Ngige, the Minister of Labor, said he is going to run. I think he will. I think he will. If you look at North Central, you look at Governor Yabelo. In his own case, it is even working to his advantage in the sense that nobody else in the North Central is also asking for it. So he stands tall and he stands alone. So it's more likely going to convince others. If you come to the Northeast, Northeast is poised for vice presidential. That's why nobody is putting himself forward. If you go to South South, you look at uh, uh, Rotimi Amechi. Rotimi Amechi is all ahead of others. So if you look at it in every zone, and Northwest, it is not fair and equitable to even bring them into the foray because they are just completing their ADS time. It will not be uh, legally right. So in essence, the six geopolitical zones, you take out Northwest, take out Northeast, the remaining four, one, one, one. These are the major contenders. So for Southwest, for example, it will have to be Asiwa. All right. Because I, I was going to say, well, I allowed you to uh, give your, the reason why you think Professor Shibajo will not run. But it is, you know, you know you don't have the authority to speak in that respect. I gave you opinion. No, it's, it's your opinion. But right. the question is that that doesn't take him out of the equation. He has not come out to say he's not running. Yes. And in fact, there is supporters are already saying he's running. They may so, well start insulting me after today. But what I'm saying is, I respect him. I, and remember, I'm and not... And don't, don't let us discard his chances. That's the point I'm making. Right. Because he has not said authoritatively or outrightly that he's not running. Because but, he has not said it, right. doesn't mean that he's not running. But it will be intriguing for him to rise and say he's interested when Asiwajo has already said that. But that, that's not, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, take away his chances. No, no, chances it's, is a very big word. But the question is that the likes of uh, Governor of uh, Ikiti State, his very good friend also, his, his name has been thrown up. Yes. So, and they are from the Southwest. And he's also uh, one, of, uh, the, the, uh, one of the allies of Balatinobu. Well, can I tell you something? Yeah. The 2023, I'm just trying to summarize for you, <laughs> I like, like a prophet, the 2023 contest, each of the candidates that will win will either be a former governor or a sitting governor, both in APC and in PDP. Hmm. And I am thinking... That's what you think. It might even be either former and uh, non-former in both. That's so you are going to find four candidates as either former or incumbent governors. Hmm. I predict that. So the... I asked Mr. Chido, Chidoka about the options left for Nigerians mm -hmm. because Nigerians will pick, Nigerians will decide. Right. The youth of this country are also that people are talking to their ears that they should need to rise up mm -hmm. and wake up right. ahead of 2023. And the, the question that Professor Pati Tobi asked on Sunday was whether our lives are better today than seven years ago before your party took, the, uh, took over the affairs of this country. The question is, whether or not the country, uh, the voters will reject your party or accept it in 2023. You see, the voters will make the best decision around that time at dawn now. It is difficult. You even have not heard of the letters. They are even saying that Governor Emofile is being pushed for a presidential as a neutral. You see, conversation will continue. The decision that will be made by Nigerians will be based upon, because like I told you, in politics one day is like 10 years. There is somebody that may be a frontliner now. By six months, he has his image would have been grossly damaged that he is not going to be a marketable person. So around the time of election is when Nigerians will be able to make up their mind. But if you are making a comparison between APC and PDP, I just want us to go and meet madmen in the street because logical people have made the conclusion. Economists have made the conclusion already. When he was talking about save and invest, save and invest, as if we were not in Nigeria when they had the, all the money they wasted. As if we were not in Nigeria when they destroyed institutions of government. If you go to first station now, if you want to jump the queue, do you know the, like, the common cliche? I want PDP. Why do you think the name is being mentioned? PDP can never come as a marketable or veritable tool, but I have gone beyond the name of a political party in my understanding of politics. Right. I think personalities will matter. Mr. Daniel Bwala, member of the P... Uh, <laughs> maybe you are going you want to, to send to me PDP. to PDP. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Abuala, for coming on tonight. <laughs>